Hello, and welcome to the Tips with Tony podcast. I'm Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time. I'm really excited for you to listen to this next interview. I have virtually in front of me, Mike Fadua. I hope I didn't screw that up, but I'm sure he will correct me. (laughs) Um, And he has his PhD in um, exercise, I think exercise science. And um, he'll, he's going to do a much better job at introducing himself. I always butcher introductions. So (laughs) I'm going to let him do the work, but I know you're going to love this conversation. It's talking all about BMI and body fat percentage and what you need to be looking for and what's actually important and what matters and how to measure it properly. And I'm super, super excited to have you guys listen to this interview. So without further ado, Mike, welcome to the Tips with Tony podcast. Thank you very much. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, awesome. it's okay about the last name. My 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 in laws uh, messed it up for the first couple of years that we were married. So uh, <laughs> one of those names. I feel bad because my last name's complicated too. So people always screw it up, and I'm always like, I don't like when people screw it up. <laughs> <laughs> but so cool. let's please introduce yourself by sharing who you are, what yeah. you do, and most importantly, why you do what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Mike Fidua. I'm an assistant professor at the University of Alabama. Um, so I spend most of my day teaching um, teaching courses and, and researching. Um, I got into this, honestly, I struggled with weight for most of my adult life. So all the way back into to middle school and high school, I've always been overweight um, and really struggled. You know, I think as a, as a teenager who's a little bit heavy, struggled to figure out ways to lose it and, and you know, dealing with misinformation and bad advice and figuring out, you know, where to go for reputable sources and um, how to do it healthy and um, wasn't finding straight answers, I guess. And so decided that I wanted to pursue this as a career. And, um, you know, over the course, I think, I think at my heaviest, I was around 290, 300 pounds almost, and then lost it with eating right and, and, you know, exercising and and kind of adopting like a, a healthier lifestyle all around. So, Awesome. That's the best way. I love hearing stories. Yeah, like absolutely. That. Yeah. When anybody comes on and if they ever say anything other than it, adopting to the lifestyle, I don't use the episode. <laughs> I'm going to be frank. That's just, I've learned to just <laughs> pre-screen people. Like that is not my message. I do not want you dieting and being on this podcast. Yeah, <laughs> it's a long road. And we always tell people too, it, it doesn't come <laughs> on quickly. And so, it, it, you know, we shouldn't really expect it to go away very quickly either. So it's a long road and slow progress is better than no progress. And yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a lifestyle. It's not a quick fix. So definitely, definitely. I was watching, um, the voice last night. I was catching up on the voice and one of the singers was a personal trainer and Gwen Stefani. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the voice, but Absolutely. Gwen Stefani, um, made a comment like to the, to the girl when she was, did a good job singing and she, and they saw her backstory and they're like, you know, and you exercise and like that, I feel like that shows like how strong your will is and all that stuff. And I hear her point, but the reason why I'm bringing this up is because like, I guess, cause I'm so involved in the world. I like forget that a lot of people just don't exercise. So it was like, almost like she was saying it like, oh, you exercise like where maybe nobody else does or something like it almost like it was like a rare thing. And I forget that. And also I was taking doing a Peloton workout the other day and the instructor was like, you are doing the thing that most people don't do. And I, 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 I really think I've gotten so far up for forgetting that like it is so ingrained in my lifestyle that for some people it is this foreign concept and it's just like not even part of something that they incorporate. Yeah. So it's, it definitely needs to be a lifestyle change. And I hope that we can make it more of the norm. Yeah. We remind our students all the time in class, like you guys are the 99.9th percentile. Like there's the, the people who you're sitting next to are healthier than, you know, than, than students across campus or, you know, folks kind of out in the real world. I mean, you guys are really in like this exercise science bubble where you just forget that, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the choices that you guys have made and the lifestyle that you guys are living is, is not the norm. And yeah. I yeah, that's really easy to forget sometimes. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more that because I know you and your brother, I believe, created this new app, which is so cool. I'm so excited to learn more about the science behind it. Um, yeah. But tell us more about what this app and kind of what made you decide to create it. Yeah, we developed actually. So my brother, there's four of us as part of the team. So we have an app that came out, Made Health and Fitness. You guys can find it in the app stores. Um, we developed it as part of our research here at Alabama. So there's another colleague that I work really closely. And both of our research is in body composition measurement. So figuring out um, how to measure muscle and how to measure fat and how to more accurately track changes 
um, different ways of tracking, different devices, all kinds of technology. And one thing that we kept running into when we're running a weight loss intervention or, or, or helping folks and um, tracking changes with athletes, everyone had to keep coming into the lab to do it. And so there was a, there's transportation issues and there's scheduling issues and that can be a barrier for a lot of people. We, we wanted to move the entire exercise physiology lab that we have on campus uh, for research. We wanted to put it into a phone because um, your phone can do just about anything, right? You can bank and you can track heart rate and blood pressure and social media. And so we said, there's gotta be a way we can measure body composition with the phone. So um, Dr. Esco and I developed the app kind of over the past two or three years, um, worked with the university to, to have, you know, go through the patent process um, and then when it was ready to launch, the, we needed a foot kind of in, in the real world outside of academics. And so we brought in two other partners to help us. And my brother was one of them. And, and we have um, some legal help from another friend that we have. And, and we, decided, we decided to launch to give pretty much everyone the tools that they need to measure what they're made of in their pocket so that they have it in the palm of their hand. It's so awesome. It's so awesome. So let's talk a little bit more about the differences between like, why would someone want to check their body fat when they can just look, you know, figure out what their BMI is? Like, what are the differences? And, you know, I know these, but I want the listeners to hear it from <laughs> you right. know a lot more about this topic. And I think it's something that I've been wanting to talk about. And I think you could do a much better job explaining the science behind why you know, that I titled this podcast, the BMI is bogus because like, it yes. really is bogus. <laughs> Can you talk to that a little bit more? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so there, there is a disconnect between, between body mass index and, and body composition. So when we, when we talk about BMI and one of the reasons we kind of want to want our listeners and, and our, and our users to get away from just tracking weight is that the scale can sometimes lie, especially with exercise and, and with weight loss and, and, you know, healthy eating, um, a lot of the weight that we lose is fat, but then some of it is also muscle. And, and when we're exercising, we add muscle. And so you might even see, you know, if you're tracking, tracking your weight and starting a new diet and exercise program, you might not see any change. And the change that can be incredibly frustrating. And the reason why we're not seeing any change is because we're adding muscle at the same time as we're losing fat. And so the scale stays the same, but the composition of what we're made of you know, that, that can be changing dramatically. And, and even like to the other extreme, if you're on a workout program and you're trying to lose weight and you're adding this muscle, you might even see the scale go up. And that can be even more defeating because you're like, oh man, well, this, all this work and all these calories that I'm tracking and these foods that I'm eating and these minutes and steps and, uh, you know, to see, to see the weight go up can be very discouraging. And so we wanted to give, you know, users a more accurate way to track their progress. And so with the app, we can measure muscle and fat with research grade accuracy from a single picture. And so the user sets up their phone and takes a single picture from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet um, with their arms kind of away from their body so we can identify the landmarks we need on the trunk. And, and we can measure what they're made of in, in 10 or 15 seconds. And simpler, as simple as stepping on the scale, because most people are taking selfies nowadays anyways. <laughs> um, and, you know, we can track progress much more accurately. And, and, you know, those small changes that a lot of times would get overlooked if we're just tracking BMI, um, we, we can actually measure those with the app. So, and, and not to, again, not to completely discount body mass index, because it does have its worth. I think, you know, when it was created, um, and the way that it's used now, we still use it in all of our research and we use it, you know, mm -hmm. to track big changes in, you know, weight status at the population level. And so I think for big epidemiology research, it's very important. Right. Um, trends in weight change, you know, over the past few decades, like there has been an increase in obesity. And I think that that's true. And I don't think BMI is inaccurately representing that. I think, you know, I think since the 1960s, we saw numbers, of, you know, average body weight in the United States is gone up by 25 pounds. And so I know that that's not muscle. And so I do think that BMI has a place. Um, I just think for the individual user, we can be a little bit more accurate with, with tracking what we're made of. Right. And I think, you know, when it comes to BMI, it's, it's a small part of the story, right? Yeah. So like, yeah. and I think 
to be honest, like from my personal experience working with clients of all different sizes and body sizes and goals, you know, I think it, there's something to be said in the extreme cases, but when it's someone in who, you know, is put in the overweight or even like a obese category, um, and it's not like in morbid two or morbid three, like there's, there's just certain layers to it that I think it's important. And the reason why we have these other forms of measure, like really need to be put in place. Yeah. Um, so let's, so let's talk about like where, how the app actually works. So you, you say they take a picture, but I'm really more interested in like how that is as accurate or is it as accurate as like, you know, I know the more expensive forms of, of body mass of checking for body mass is um, and like muscle mass and stuff is like underwater weighing and the bod pod. And like, so how is that? Is that close to that? How does it work in the sense of like, what data are you pulling particularly? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the app works very similar to the way that you would track like a waist circumference measurement or a hip circumference measurement from the image. When we have, we take the selfie the image is actually measuring across the body at different landmarks. So if you can imagine taking like circumference measurements um, all over the image, once we've kind of identified where the person is, um, rather than the distance around, we're just, we're measuring the distance across. And mm -hmm. so that can create something that's very similar to what underwater weighing uses. Underwater weighing in the bod pod, for those of you guys that don't do this on the, on the day to day, actually measures body volume or the size that the person takes up. And then we have a few more calculations that we can go to to figure out muscle mass and body fat. But, but that, those two techniques are just measuring body size. Um, the app can measure body size also, and it can do body volume or body size with about 99.8% accuracy. And so um, from that, we can use it in research. We can substitute underwater weighing out and use the app as a surrogate measure or as a replacement measure. Um, with pretty comparable accuracy. We correlate really strongly with those kind of other lab-based measures, correlations anywhere for, for the stats nerds out there, 0.9 up to 1.0 is, is really very strong, like almost perfect correlation. So, so we have pretty good accuracy. The, um, the, the main benefit I think with the app is that it's so much cheaper mm -hmm. and it again reduces that need to come to a physical place to have your body fat or, or muscle mass measured. So you know, the, the underwater weighing, I think, is a great option. The bod pod is based on pretty similar techniques. There's others that are out there that are more kind of mainstream commercial. Um, Bioimpedance measures, estimates how much muscle mass you have based on the electrical currents and how much water you have in your body. And then DEXA, I think most people would, would assume is kind of the gold standard measure. And th that measures muscle, bone, and fat using x-rays. And so we correlate really strongly with all of those lab-based measures. We're just about seventy or $80,000 cheap. <laughs> so and we're portable yeah. and um, yeah and you can you don't have to you don't also you don't have to go anywhere or do anything you can do it in your home a lot of people yeah. might be embarrassed or they are you know which they shouldn't be but you know i we i know that that's easier said than done you know yeah. maybe you don't want anyone to know maybe you really want to just do it for your personal information and honestly that's your right so yeah. the fact that you can with your own app and test it i think that's awesome yeah um, it's something i mean honestly like when if, if I'm not comfortable with, with my fitness level or with my body, like, why would I go to a gym and either, you know, take off my, take off my shirt or like put on really, really like tight clothes and then have somebody pinch and pull and take a tape measure out. Mm -hmm. I mean, that would be uncomfortable for, for most people. And, right. and like, even if I work out like all the time, that would still be a pretty uncomfortable situation for a lot of us. And so the app, again, the, the, the app, you can do it at home. Yeah. Um, you can do it in the privacy of, of your own living room if you want to. You just need a blank wall behind you. And nobody sees the data except for you. And so you get the results. They're not shared with anyone. Um, nobody sees your image. So like even us, like on the on the administrative side, the images aren't stored anywhere. Mm. We just see the numbers that get put into the database when it's all finished and said and done. So, I mean, the privacy is another huge advantage. Um, and especially now, honestly, with with COVID and most of us are at home um, and our gyms are closed. I think, I know that I've invested in a few kettlebells since we went on quarantine and, uh, and a couple jump ropes, um, but I don't, we don't have the resources to track body composition until now. And so now like we can, we can actually measure that without the need to go into 
the gym or to a clinic to get to get those changes measured. And, and I think that simplifies the process for a lot of us. Definitely, definitely. Um, so what are some things that might alter, and I don't mean like changes people can make to help lose body fat, but I mean, what I mean is like, if someone's testing their body fat, like if they, should they be hydrated? Should they like, should they be, have eaten before? Like, what are things that might, um, are things that I'm sure you have instructions on the app, but I think it's important for if someone even did get their body fat tested, or they have like, they happen to have a machine at home or maybe even on their scale or something that might calculate that. Like what are certain things that um, kind of affect body fat percentage and the, the yeah. measurement it per commute, um, computes out? Yeah. So we, um, with, well, I'll tell you what we do in the lab first. Like if we, if we have somebody come in for a, for a body composition assessment in the lab, we, we make sure that we do it first thing in the morning. So they come in on an empty stomach. Uh, we make sure that they're well hydrated. So, we, we check their hydration status. Uh, we make sure that they've had a pretty good night's sleep. And if we're tracking changes over time, we make sure that they keep the same routine like the day before every time they come in to do a measurement so that that part can stay consistent. We try not to measure after we've exercised. You know, We try not to measure if we've had any like weird weeks where that doesn't typically represent like a normal, uh, a normal pattern for you. Um, with the app itself, since we're measuring body size, um, anything like baggy clothing that would make your figure look bigger than it actually is will, will alter the accuracy of the measurement. Um, so we try to have people wear like leggings or yoga pants and sports bra or leggings and yoga pants and a compression like a top or something like that. Guys usually go shirtless um, and they scan that way. But if, if somebody wants the most accurate measure, whether they're doing it with our technique or if they have a scale at home or if they're getting it done at a clinic, um, first thing in the morning, fasting, make sure you're well hydrated, come in on an empty stomach, uh, make sure you haven't exercised that day, and, and you should get pretty accurate numbers. The, the main drawback that we see with other techniques, um, the hydration level really messes with the accuracy. Mm -hmm. And so the, 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 the accuracy of the, like, the bioimpedance technique kind of goes all over the place if somebody comes in and they're they've had a ton of salt the, the day before or varying like based on menstrual cycle changes mm -hmm. or uh, medication changes, anything that's going to alter that total body water number um, really throws off the accuracy. Yeah, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. Now, does the app, it gives you a total body fat percentage. Does it also give a fat distribution? It does. And that was something that we wanted to make sure we could provide to the users also. So we give a, um, a whole bunch of a whole bunch of measures. We give um, fat-free mass, so that's muscle, bone, and, and water. We give fat mass in um, in kilograms. We give body fat percentage, but then we also give the user something called android and gynoid fat, which we use a lot of times to identify folks who might be at greater risk of health complications because of higher body fat. So we know that the distribution patterns that somebody has, like where they're storing their body fat, makes a big difference and in predicting who's more likely to develop cardiovascular disease or high blood pressure or diabetes. And so we tell how much body fat somebody has in, in their android region, which is kind of around their midsection um, or their belly, and then in their gynoid region, which is around their hips and thighs. Um, usually what we see, folks who have more body fat stored around their belly, around their midsection in the android region, um, we call that like the apple shape they are usually at higher risk for high blood pressure and diabetes and, and high cholesterol and cardiovascular disease and cancers and stuff like that. Um, having higher body fat, but storing it pr predominantly in the lower body, in that gynoid region, the pear shape, um, carries a lower risk. And so we want to give our users that also. So that not all body fat is created equal. Where you're storing it um, matters a whole bunch. And so we want to give folks that information too. Yeah. So, okay. And then maybe like, are there, what, when they, it, when you're told your body fat percentage, does it tell you when it predicts that, like the, when it shows that, does it tell you like what this is telling you? Like, does it put you, if it's like over 40%, like, does it tell you you're more at risk or does it tell you like you're com like compared to people your age, you're considered lean or does it give you any feedback like that? So we don't have any norms to compare to. Um, that's one of the difficult things that we ran into trying to find standards to compare all of the results. Um, studies that use DEXA, use the x-ray machine to measure body composition, 
on average, they usually test a little bit higher than the other methods. And so what they would consider to be higher risk, or if they're using like percentiles or ranks or scores to figure out where a person stacks up, um, their numbers will be a little bit different than if somebody has standards that are based on bioimpedance or underwater weighing. So um, taking your measurements on one device and then directly comparing it to another device gets tricky because they're they're going to be off by just a little bit. They're all trying to estimate what you're made of and they're, they're estimating in a little bit different way. So um, what we want and, and what users can do, when you download the app, you can allow us to use the data for research purposes. And that sounds really really um, kind of sinister, like there's a lot going on behind the scenes, but the data that we're pulling is, is height and weight, and then your age and your gender, and then your body fat percentage. And those are the only, those are the only pieces of data that we're pulling and we're pulling those so that we can create these big normed data, data sets. What we, what we hope is that we'll have hundreds of thousands and millions of downloads and users created that allow us to track the data. And so we can, then take those numbers and say, look, like this is compared to somebody your same age and same height and same gender, this is where you kind of stack up compared to folks who are just like you so that you can put your numbers in context. Yeah. Um, we have frequently asked questions in the app to, to go into more detail like, hey, this is your Android body fat number. What, what the heck is Android body fat, right? right. So there's frequently right. asked questions and there's more information and we can point, point you guys to resources within the app um, but that's one of the goals is that we would like to build the biggest publicly available database of, of normed body composition values because a lot of folks don't even know for an average 25 year old female like what what is what is normal right I, mean, I actually that like that you're not comparing to other kind of uh, like other methods of calculating because it's like being on two different scales right and it's like exactly you can't you can't compare the two you have to just exactly. use the same scale over exactly over yeah i love that a lot i like that a lot um so one thing i was i'm wondering is your kind of thoughts on someone who might be trying to lose body fat they're they're doing all the things they're strength training they're in a calorie deficit they're focusing on protein like you know, doing all the things, um, at what pace would you say is expected or like, so what I, let me just backtrack by just saying like when someone comes to me and they want to lose weight, you know, they have done all the things to lose weight really rapidly, but then gain it back. And so at my, I tell them that, you know, the gold standard or like the, the, me, the way in which we want you to lose weight would maybe like anywhere from like, honestly, a quarter pound to even two pounds per week. Right. Like, not, yeah. you know, some weeks you might not even lose some months you might not lose. Right. Cause we're not really focused on the scale, but if I was, you know, just to see if we're on target, like at in their three month mark, we want to see if like, okay, are they on a, on a healthy, steady pace? So I'm asking, I'm saying that because I'm wondering when it comes to body fat percentage, like what is a realistic expectation in drop from say month one to month two to month three to month four, you know, like will that yeah. change much in the for the body fat percentage not the weight so the body fat percentage will change a little bit more slowly than the, um than the weight number will and i think yeah. that's because a lot of the weight that we're losing we would normally say about 75 percent of the the weight that you lose is fat and some of that is going to come off as muscle mm -hmm. um, during the first first few weeks a lot of that is going to come off as water and so um, we might see during the first couple of weeks, if we see a change in body weight, we know that a lot of that is fluid retention. So we're, we're sweating and we're, we're, we're cutting maybe some foods out of our kind of normal eating habits. High sodium um, stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, like adding fruits and veggies. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're eliminating some of the maybe less healthy foods and replacing them with healthier options. Um, a lot of the weight that we lose initially is going to be water. And so we may see pretty rapid changes if they're going in that direction at first, and then they tend to slow down. They're slowing down because beyond that first like three to four weeks, um, we're actually losing a little bit more fat than we were kind of at the beginning. And so the changes can, um, the pace varies, um, but you know, the scale again is giving you kind of an incomplete picture of the, of what we would expect. I think that there's a disconnect too with what um, folks who are starting a program expect to lose, and then what the clinicians and practitioners on our end are, are kind of seeing as a realistic, successful program. And so what we've seen on our end is folks who are expecting to lose 10 or 15% body fat, 
uh, or, or we're expecting them to lose like 10% body fat would be great. And then, and then they come in expecting like they're going to drop 35% fat and then get very frustrated that the progress, like you said, is, is half a pound here. And then we may go up next week and then we're coming back down the week after that. And so I think um, taming those expectations a little bit and recognizing that, that any progress is good as long as we're kind of making the slow, steady, like march toward our end goal. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So see, and I hear 10%. And I'm like, that's a lot. I guess it is a, it is a frame, lot. Ten, yes. To lose 10% body fat, I feel like that's like, unless you're like in the very high range, because like, let's just put things in perspective because then there's also like too low body fat, right? Can you talk a little right. bit to that? Like when would someone want to be more, more co concerned about maybe putting fat on? Yeah, so actually, so let me backtrack a little bit. So when we say like 10%, 10% fat loss, to put that in context, if somebody who weighs, you know, 200 pounds, we're, we're talking about 10% of 200, we're, we're losing like 20, 30 pounds of fat. And that's a lot of, of weight to lose. If you think like the number of calories that are stored in a pound of fat, that, that is an incredible like amount of progress. And so that, that would be at the very, very far kind of extreme end. But I think um, what you mentioned with folks being underweight or, or having too low body fat, fat has a function physiologically. And so we want folks to have body fat because we need our hormones to be regulated. Um, it serves a fun function with cell signaling. And so we would, we would expect kind of women, especially below like the 12 ish percent body fat numbers. Mm -hmm. um, that would probably for us be the lower end of what we would want someone to be at anything lower than that. We start worrying that we're um, we're impacting our, our bone health. We're, we're missing menstrual cycles. Yeah. There's, um, we're having kind of these unfavorable changes that are happening within the body because our body fat is too low. Mm -hmm. Um, same thing with guys, we have, our threshold is a little bit lower. So anywhere within like the three to 5% range, we would call probably essential. Um, anything lower than that, we're, we're starting to worry that we're having some unfavorable health outcomes too. Um, so yeah, I think that there is a there is a lower threshold for where we would actually encourage folks to stop restricting and stop extra like limit the amount of of um, energy that we're expending through exercise. So, we, so we're not in this deficit of trying to maintain these like really really low weight numbers and these really low body fat numbers just because um, we're supposed to have it. It's supposed to be there. Um, mm. So I think those are kind of probably about twelve percent ish for women and about five percent ish for men somewhere around there. Okay. That's, that's helpful. That's helpful. Um, all right. Well, I feel like we covered a lot of things. Um, is there anything else we didn't get to that you wanted to mention, um, of just topics or maybe more about the app? Yeah, well, we, so what we have for the users, just so we can kind of tell you guys and all the listeners, we, we have a code that you guys can download the app and track with. And one of the things that we wanted to do is a thank you for letting us be on was to give you guys, um, we'll pick one person that, that downloads the app with the code, um, Tips with Tony, and we'll give you guys a six month membership so you can have unlimited scans and have access to track all of your changes and share with your friends um, kind of in the new year once, once you start kind of the the new exercise and, and healthy eating plan. So um, Tony, if you want to talk a little bit more about that, you can give a little bit more detail. Sure. On yeah, definitely. So yeah, well, first of all, I think everybody can download if everybody, anybody who downloads the app and uses tips with Tony, they'll automatically get one free reading, right? Correct. Yeah. So we wanted to make sure, cause I know yeah. this is really hard to believe. Like we can just, you take a picture and you get a body fat number. And you're like, <laughs> Wait a second. What is this? Yeah. Um, so everyone who downloads the app gets a free scan. And so you can awesome. see how it's set up, how to take the picture, kind of what the user experience looks like and see the features, take your measurements, get your numbers. Um, if you want to do a second measurement, then um, we have a subscription option that, you know, if you subscribe, it's, it's unlimited scans. So awesome. you, I mean, we're not recommending that you would scan every day, but if you really wanted to get in there and take a picture every day, go for it. Um, you can track as many times as you want to. That's a good point though. How often should someone be checking their body fat percentage? What I usually check it? once a week. Really? Um, yep. Once a week, just because like I would normally, if I'm tracking, I if guess... I'm tracking my workouts and I'm tracking um, just for my own progress, I just want to see what's going on just because I'm curious. So I, I would, I do it once a week. 
Well, yeah, now that you say that, because normally, so when, if someone's coming to me for weight loss and some people, everyone's different, right? So some yeah. people might weigh in every day, but really we're only looking like week to week or they might weigh in once a week, but really what we're looking at is month to month. So I actually sure. understand that lot because I'm thinking why once a week, what's really going to change your body fat percentage if it, other than like water, right? Like what you were just talking yes. about, yeah. Yeah. but you're, it's true. Like, okay, so maybe one week it's high, one week it's low, one week it's high, but the trend from month to month it's so it's it's good for just data just to know to yeah. Do, yeah to not and that's the the biggest thing when it comes to the scale frustrations with the scale even with body fat percentage because until it's like really like a significant change and you've been committing to something for a long period of time like you're not really gonna see or feel much of a difference until you really kind of push through that that frustration and the uncomfortable and like you do the things that you don't usually do like that's when you're really gonna see the change so Sure. Actually, I think that's great. Yeah. The so. change is so gradual that like when we do this in, on the research side of things, if we want to call it like a true weight loss intervention for a research project, we're talking at least like eight weeks um, because this, the changes that we see, like the progress that we're making is very gradual. And so you're right. When we want to see if there's a big improvement, we've got to zoom out and look at trends over, you know, weeks to months. And, and the more data points that we have kind of within that, um, the more accurately we can spot trends. And so we, what we wanted to eliminate too with the app was, you know, if you're using a DEXA to, to measure body fat percentage, or if you're going in and signing up for a scan at a gym to have a bioimpedance measure done, those cost money. And they cost, you know, DEXAs can cost, depending on the scans, cost a couple hundred bucks a scan. And so how often are, are you actually going to do that? I don't want to pay a hundred dollars like every couple of weeks to go get a scan done. I'm going to save this and I'm going to do it maybe once or twice a year. But if I'm all if if all I have is two data points, I'm missing all of the the small progress that I'm making yeah. in between. So you're right. How often should you scan? I do it once a week. Sometimes I do it more. And the reason I do it more is to remind myself that if the scale goes up, it's not all fat. Right. And, and right. so and actually, if the scale goes up from day to day, there's a good chance most of that is water, and that's going to show up in your scan as fat free mass, which again is reassuring that I can have a beer and be a normal person and go out for pizza and have a burger and do that and, and still live like a normal, healthy life and not get completely obsessed with, oh my gosh, I added half a pound since yesterday. Mm -hmm. we're, we're really trying to zoom out and see the big picture over weeks and months. Yeah, this is so helpful. I'm all right. I'm totally introducing this to my clients because I ask them for body fat percentage. I have them do it just once a month because a lot sure. of them don't even have access to it. Yeah. Right. So, but now that it's so easily accessible, this is definitely something I'm going to, you know, introduce to them. And I hope the listeners, guys, I hope you download this app. Um, I really, really want you to just get away from, you know, the scale can be helpful. Just like, you know, the body, the body for everything kind of tells us something, but it's not it. It might tell us that we need to drink more water. It might tell us that we need more sleep. It might tell us that we need to, you know, add more protein or something, but it's not really t uh, telling the full story. So, but, um, so this is great. So yeah. So anybody, you guys go to my made, the my made yep, and you my can download my made app.com. You can download it on Apple or Android. Use the code tips with Tony. You'll get your first free reading. Um, and then if you decide you want to keep up with it, go for it. And then what we're, we're going to do is when should we do maybe, Well, so I'm, I'm probably going to release this by January, by January 1, January 1, 2021. So maybe the end of January, you'll pull out someone, let's maybe let's do that. All right, guys. So if you're hearing this by January 31st, 2021, make sure you download the app and use code tips with Tony and you'll be entered for a raffle for six months free. Yeah, the six months, honestly, when you start that program is the most important at forming yeah. those habits. So like if we can give any encouragement, we'll give you guys a premium membership, you can scan and track and, and measure those changes up until the summer. And then hopefully we'll all be off of quarantine and lockdown and we can actually get out and enjoy it. And, I hope so. Uh, I hope. It's I know, so right? funny. Everyone's like, everyone's saying things like, I can't wait for 2020 to be over, you know, I can't, but it's like, what's going to like December 31st to January one, what's really going to be different yeah. from 2020 to 2020? Yeah. Like, much, it's yeah. still going to be here, unfortunately, <laughs> like not much is changing, but hopefully the end of it is over. Something comes out where, I don't know, hopefully it won't be 
as crazy as things have recently been. Yep. Um, all right, Mike, how would somebody get in touch with you? Maybe they have questions outside of um, maybe going to the website. Is there any way that can personally contact you with questions? Yeah, so we have email set up. So info at mymadeapp.com. You can hit us up there. Um, we're also on social media, so you can check us out. Uh, my made app. And then um, if folks want to get in, if, if folks are really interested about the research, we can share that via social media, or we can send you guys to the to the research papers. If you want to really get into the numbers and take a look at it, we're happy to share those too. But info at mymadeapp.com and, and uh, you can get in touch with us there. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here, Mike. This was Thank such you. a great conversation. Guys, go, definitely go follow them. Go download the app. If you're not subscribed to the Tips with Tony podcast, definitely hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Tony Marinucci, your registered dietitian, helping you get healthy one bite at a time.